Hey everybody, Patty Ann here. Today I'm just going to quickly work on a project for myself and I'm going to let you follow along in case you might like to do this too. This is from Embroider Shop. I'm not affiliated with them. I just found this set of poinsettias or poinsettias that I really like. And if you look down here, you can see them more closely. Okay, this is what they look like. And I think that'd be great for like a gift giving thing. Maybe you want to give somebody a little, you know, one of those little tiny trees for Christmas or even to just give them a package wrap with this or to decorate, you know, your own mantle or some other Christmas um, thing that you have. Maybe around a frame could be really cute. But this is what they look like, poinsettias or poinsettias with little lights in them. And let's see down here, I believe it's going to show. No, I thought it did show where the what the lights look like. Well, you probably know. So right now it's on sale for $7.50. So I just purchased mine. And all I did was add it to my cart. Once it was added to my cart and I went to pay for it, it said, which version would I like? Well, since I use a um, brother machine, this is what I use, the PES machines or the PES type files. Notice that there are other ones over here. If you use a Bernina, you'd get the art files. Uh, if you use uh, whatever that is, uh, Viking, uh, Janome, Elna, another Janome, Kenmore, Kenmore, so, Fof. Okay, so anyway, you would pick when you're uh, going out or when you're downloading which one you want to download, which is nice because you sure don't need to have all that stuff, ex those extra files on your computer when all you need is the one type for your machine. So here they are right here. I downloaded it, right? And then I went ahead and opened up these. Oh, first I have to extract all. And I'm going to change the name of this a little bit to Poinsettia Lights. And I also like to put it the, it the after that, maybe the where I got it. So Embroider Shop. And I'm going to extract. Okay, as you can see, I went to File and Open. And I found my poinsettia red leaf small right here where I had extracted it. And I opened it. And it comes in looking like this. So the first thing I wanted to do was I wanted to change it so it was all just one color. Because I'm only stitching this in red. Notice if I come up here to Stitch Simulation, it's going to first do this part in a pink or whatever color I choose. But here it's shown in a pink. After that, then it will go back. It'll stop, allow me to change color and do the blue. Well, I'm just going to do mine totally in one color. So an easy way to change that is just come over here to one color and just choose the one color you want it to be. And now if you go through the stitch sim simulation, you'll see it's not going to stop. It's just going to do all of it, which is great. So you can see that the poinsettia leaf small, the S stands for small, fits in a 4x4 four four hoop, as does the large poinsettia leaf. And again, I would change this to one color. And I'll just go like that and say like that and save it. However, you know, I have a 5x7 hoop that goes with my um, PE770 and PE800. So I could actually have it like this, where I can fit three large ones. But this one's sort of crazy. Let's see. I think I got to think these are all grouped together. Well, anyway. I would fix this because I know that it's going out of the edge. But I can put three of the large ones and three of the small ones in the 5x7 hoop, which is really good, right? Because I need 35 of each to make a 35 light set. But check it out. If I have that hoop that I'm able to, well, let's see what it's called here. If you look up here, it's called a multi-position hoop. If I have a multi-position hoop, check this out. Okay, so what I did just now is I came up here to File and New Page. And once I opened a new page, I made sure that I had a 4x4 four four hoop, 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters, so you could see how this works. So there it is. But like I said, I want you to check this out. I'm going to change this hoop size to the multi-position hoop and the one that fits our machines, the PE770 or 800, is the jumbo hoop 
So I'm going to say apply. And then the next thing I did was I just brought in my poinsettias and fit them on here to see how many I could put in one hooping because this is one hooping, one hooping that I'll move and I'll show you that. But check this out now. This is how many I can fit in one hooping with the 5 by 12 hoop. So notice I can do one, two, three, four, five big ones and one, two, three, four, five small ones. So I fit these all in here and now I need to save this. So I'm going to go to File, S Save Stitch File As, and it automatically just names it Split Design. So I'll just leave it like that for demonstration purposes. So I'll say Save. Now, when I go back to File and Open, you'll notice it's added some new things in here. Split Design Bottom and Split Design Top. So I'll open the bottom first and go open. Okay, that's what the bottom looks like. Then I'm going to go to File and Open and Split Design Top. And I'm going to show you that over at the machine, how you simply just move things. But here's the thing. For me, over on my PE770, it may be the same in the PE800. And actually, in the PE800, it'll be a little bit easier because I believe you'll see the color of the thread. But I'll show you the trick over in the PE770. But here's what I do. This is the top file, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that the color here is a, is a word that starts with T for top. So I'm going to change this color to tangerine. T-A-N-G-E-R-I-N-E. So what I did was I clicked over here in the red color that brought up this thread box. And he, I have brother embroidery that just comes up selected. I changed it to tangerine and said go. And there's a tangerine. It's going to change it all to tangerine. I'll say OK. And then I'm going to save that. And split design. So that was top for tangerine. Split design number one top. Yes. All right, and now we also have the bottom open. Well, the bottom one, I want to have the color of the thread start with a B for bottom or a B for blue. So I'll just change this and search for a color blue. Whoopsie. And hit enter. Ugh, blur, blue. <laughs> there we go. And I'll just choose uh, sky blue and I'll say OK. And then I'll just go to File, Save Stitch File As, and I'm going to save it as Split Design Bottom 2. Okay, just like that. Okay, now I'll show you over my machine how that is a fantastic tip, at least for me, and helps me stay organized. Okay, here's where that little trick that I showed you comes in handy. Remember, I'm going to do the top, so I'm going to have these two hooks placed on here first, the top. And then when I'm done with that, I'll do the bottom, which will be these bottom two. You never just do the middle two. It's the top two or the bottom two. But the secret I showed you that I like to do that helps me remember is I'm going to go ahead and open this. It's retrieving the patterns, and I have a bazillion patterns on this, so I'm going to go to minus 10 to go backwards, and then I'm going to go forward to find the one I think I want. And I think it's this one right here, and I'm going to put it the up arrow. Now, this is the trick that I like to do. I like to check the color, and it's going to tell me, ah, I have this set on minutes right now. So somebody said they really like the 800 because you can see how many minutes something is going to take. You can do the same thing with the PE770. What you do is you change, oops, no, cancel. You change this. So right now it's on time. So I hit this little icon here. Right now it's on time. If I hit this button here, it will change the needle count or that, or name of color. So I'm going to leave mine on name of color right now, and I'll go back. So right now you can see the first color, that stitch is gonna be black, 
but I'm concerned about this one. I wanna make sure it starts with a T for top color. So let's go. Oh, tangerine, perfect. So I know this is my top because it's saved as the top one. So if we go back, uh, we'll say okay. I'll show you then for the bottom one, I'm going to have that as blue. And I'll know I have the right one if it says the color is blue for the bottom. Here's this one. I think that's the bottom one. I can check the color. Sky blue is the second one, that's correct. So see this thing right here is always black. Let's go see if it's the same in the first one. Okay, you see it's still black, but I can check the color and I see that the second one is tangerine, which stands for top. T for tangerine and T for top. Okay, as you can see, since I'm going to use the heat tool at the end, I do have my sulky rayon thread and I'm ready to put this in and I'm gonna take these two and put them on here. After this one is done stitching, when it's all done stitching, I'll take this off and move this to the bottom two places, okay? Okay, at this point, I'm getting ready to stitch the bottom part of the design in the bottom part of the hoop. So I'm removing the top or the hoop from, and now I'm going to put it in the lower two little slots. Okay, and if we look up here at the screen on my PE770, you'll see that I've got to go now to the bottom design. So I'm going to say, okay, delete this. And I'm going to go to the thumb drive again and find my other design. And so it's this one, I'm pretty sure, but I'm going to double check and the way I can double check again is I can check by looking at the color. The first one was black, and now I'm going to see the second one should be blue since it's the bottom and it is blue. So that's perfect. One other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to skip this placement line because I don't really want to take the time to put that in. So I went to adjust and the plus and minus needle, and I'm going to go forward one whole spool of thread which will make it jump to the second step. So all I have to do now is put my presser foot down and hit go. Okay, I'm all done doing my embroidering. As you can see, I have a bucket of water here and I put these things in there to rinse out the excess to rinse out the stabilizer. Now, in the beginning, I was using the stabilizer that's more like um, a paper towel. I ran out of that, though, and so I used this kind that's like, uh, I don't know, saran wrap almost, and it worked perfectly. The next thing that you'll need is some kind of a heat tool. I have this one that's made specifically for doing this with embroidery, but you can also use a wood-burning tool or a uh, soldering iron. I have this piece of foil here so I can clean off the tip when I need to. And I have this pan just because it's handy for me and I'm not so worried about putting this somewhere where it shouldn't be because if you do, it will burn and it could start a fire. And I also wear this glove because one time last week when I was messing with this, I, I you probably can't see it, but I accidentally picked up this thinking that the rod part would be cool and it wasn't so i have these heat gloves that i used also with my um, heat press over there so all you do is this you take a, a leaf or a piece and you just start going around it like this 
and this heat tool just perfectly melts around your item, your leaf, and it does not mess with the thread because you used rayon thread. If I had used polyester thread, the thread would be melting at the same time that I'm melting off the extra organza that I don't need. So right now I just go around here like this. It gives off a tiny bit of an odor. If you'd like, you could have it in a ventilated room. You do have to be careful to only touch the outer edge because in a moment I'm going to show you how I put the hole in the center so that I can string it on my lights. At the end I'm going to go ahead, this is a battery operated uh, set of lights going to put the batteries in. I'm not totally done with all of these to show you, but I'm going to put it on a tree that I have in my house shaped like a Christmas tree and it has white lights on it, but I call it my woodland tree or my bear tree. As you know, I live in the mountains and, and I just like to collect little figurines that are all about the woodland animals. So I have a lot of bears in it and you'll see in a moment when I take this up there and put it on the tree so you can look how, see how beautiful it's going to be. I'm not sure I'm going to keep it in that tree. I think I actually want to use this one on my mantle. Another nice place would be in a wreath. Add this to a wreath to make it look fancy. Okay, so I can keep going around here and making this as perfect as I want, but it doesn't really have to be absolutely perfect because you're not going to be looking at it that closely. So there's the leaf. Then all I do is I take the point of this and, hold carefully, stick this in the center until it makes a hole. Put this back down. And let's see, I thought I had another green one ready, but I don't. So this one is wet, but I can still show you what you do. All you do, and it's wet from being in the water to get rid of the stuff, the stabilizer. So all you have to do, I'm trimming off a little thread, is just take one of your light bulbs. I have a 35 light set that I got off of Amazon and push this up through here. I'll link below or in my Amazon shop, the one I used, if you want to get a 35 set. So you put that on there and of course it would be dry. Then you now you would put the next size on. I can take my glove off. The next size on. Like that. And then the smallest size on goes last. Just like that. So you can see I've made quite let's do this, quite a few of these and they're gonna look beautiful on a tree or on a wreath or as a wreath. Hopefully you can see those pretty well. Let's see, here we go. Aren't they pretty? Okay, let's go upstairs and see what they look like on the tree. Thank you. 